right now it's the help from the community that's keeping everything going. So we are trying to be creative and try to figure out ways. We are trying to refinance uh, using equity in our home to refinance and make things easier that way. Um, hoping that next year will be normal, you know, maybe. Uh, maybe it'll be normal in six months, I don't know. I mean, nobody knows with this second wave that they're talking about if that's going to happen or not happen. So a lot of facilities, like myself, have a lot of schooling horses. And the schooling horses are in their keep by doing lessons and camps. And without that, they're still eating, they're still needing their stalls cleaned, and they're needing hay put out and water put out, and all of that, you know, costs money. And uh, so we're all in that predicament where we, we don't have any revenue streams coming in, um, and, and all of us feed off of each other, you know, the other schooling barns come to ours and, and train to go to the bigger horse shows, and, and none of that is happening right now. Um, particularly here, we did have a horse show in March, right before all this happened, um, the first weekend in March, and then we were shut down on the 16th. So our horse show in April, our horse show in May, our horse show in June, as well as our May and our June Trillium shows. Trillium's the next step up from schooling. And, you know, last year, I think we had 170 horses on site. So it was, uh, it was a, lot of, a lot of participation from the Georgian Bay Trillium Zone. And uh, we normally have a team with pony jumpers that go out to the A circuit shows and qualify for the Royal um, and the CSHA classes. So we have some horses that do the cup classes. And um, I don't see that any of that stuff's going to happen this year. And I mean, the government has a few programs out there, but it doesn't really work for us. Um, the CERB does work for some businesses that are incorporated, and um, we are looking for um, s some sort of program to come down the chute. And um, we're still at a standstill. We still don't know where we can fall in. So, you know, I was asked in past, how am I going to make this work and we've talked about you know selling some of our horses um, but then you have to buy them you have to buy something to replace that once we start back into work and it's it's not easy to find a school horse that can take a joke they are hard to come by they're amazing animals that teach the young and nervous you know maybe not necessarily young but older nervous people or people that have had you know a bad experience on a horse to come back and and get that confidence they're hard to find so when you have one that's amazing you don't want to sell it and uh, you know they're part of the part of the family. If people would like to sponsor a, a school horse, any donation is obviously very much appreciated. But to give you an idea, um, the just for the hay alone for a horse for the month is about 175 outside for the round bales to keep a horse outside. Um, you know, there's all the other costs, blanketing, vaccines, teeth floating, all those sorts of things. We didn't in incorporate into these pricings because obviously they're very low, but, um, you know, to keep the horse fed on hay, about 175, and one that's inside on grain and, and being turned in and out, about 300. Again, that doesn't include, you know, a uh, hydro bill. Uh, the hydro bills in places like this are, are astronomical, um, you know, because we heat the water outside and inside and so on and so forth. We're just playing it day by day at this point, we are just going through the, the works.